Well, good afternoon, chat. I hope the apocalypse is treating you well. Oh, this might be the last time you can actually say, hey, I'm doing pretty all right. Things are, things are looking up for me. Because I don't know if they're going to be looking up for anybody much sooner. We've been following this happening now for, we're almost at the, well, we are at the one month anniversary. I think the first stream I did was on the 23rd of January. An entire month dedicated to our little girl there. You might know her. Tiny little Chinese lady. Likes to ride a white horse. Got some funny looking little wings on her back. And a kinky style haircut. Eats some pretty disgusting shit. And sneezes a lot. But overall, pretty good gal. I'd rate her, I'd rate her high up there on the list. Now she's blown past some of her uh, previous uh, waifus, if you will. Uh, a bullet chan nice girl, okay, but couldn't get the fucking job done. Zika-chan, who are you even? Do we even remember? Oh, you made babies with big heads. Get out of here. Go away. SARS-chan. MERS-chan. <laughs> you're in the rearview mirror. We're driving so far off that you're, you're little specks on the fucking horizon. All right, you're, you're all the way back there. We're talking catastrophe. I've enjoyed watching the last month of this shit transpire because there's nothing funnier to me than watching people say, it's a nothing burger. Oh, oh, I love that saying. And I, I just want to, there we go. These buns are empty. There's nothing here. Oh, it's just a few people sick in China. Oh, it's just a few, a few provinces sick in China. So what if half of China shut down? Not a big deal. Okay, all of Southeast Asia shut down. Who really cares? Is it really that big of a deal? Of oh, the Middle East too? Whatever, not a big deal. Oh, oh, Europe? Whatever. North America? Come on. Africa? What? All right, so it's spread. Oh, Australia. Oh, so it's spread all over the world now. In fact, I've, I've made my own little chart to keep track. Take a look. This is our own little game of Plague, Inc. You can see everywhere it's gone. Today, it's infected four new countries. Algeria. And we got another one in Africa. Croatia. Austria and uh, Switzerland. The day before that, it infected a bunch of others as well. You can see the little, the little areas where things pop off. You can notice those tiny little specks on the map where everything goes to shit. So our little nothing burger sure has gotten to be... Well, those buns have gotten awfully big. Maybe there's no meat in the middle. Who knows? I know everybody says, but, but Jim... Oh, China, China's taken, China has saved the world, Jim. You need to acknowledge that it's peaked, it's over. China, the Chinese, all oh, hail the Chinese government. Winnie the Pooh has saved the world, Jim. He's put people in those coofing camps. And he stalled the virus. It's peaked, it's over, it's done with. Oh, we're going to get a few sick people, but China has led the way. Oh, I hate to break the news to you. Actually, no, I don't. I love to break the news to you. You nothing burger-loving fucks. <laughs> Please clip this this particular segment for all the nothing burgers out there who want to say that, but China, oh, the virus peaked. They said it peaked. It's over. It's done with. A little bit of bad news. Tiny bit of bad news for you guys. Uh, what's that say? Oh, coronavirus. Wuhan to quarantine all cured patients for 14 days after they begin testing positive again. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. That's not supposed to happen. Recovered and discharged people were sent to designated centers from Saturday onwards. Decision follows several instances in which recovered patients were found to still be carrying the virus. Here's the key point, kids. And able to infect others. Oh, that's good shit. Oh, my happening boner is just pounding into the wall. I'm going to have to have somebody come spackle that hole up. So you're telling me, our little girl here, our little Corona Chan, she gets you sick. <laughs> she gets you sick. Gives you the worst run of your life. Maybe your fucking lungs are scarred. Maybe your heart half blows up. Your testicles are no longer functional. You survive it, though. You're, you're a fucking survivor. But you're never cured. You're always sick. And you go out as a cured person, and you infect other people. Totally naturally occurring virus, by the way. This is how every disease that's ever been <laughs> has functioned. 
You know, the Indonesians were having a little bit of a spat with the international community over the designation of what this is. Uh, the difference between SAR, SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19. They were saying, no, SARS-CoV-2 is the virus and COVID-19 is the disease. Rather fitting that it follows the HIV AIDS uh, <laughs> model because apparently, just like with HIV and AIDS, you can manage the disease, but it never goes away. I hope you're all ready to take Keletra and Alluvia for the rest of your lives. Oh, that's fun. Immunosuppressants. Oh, oh, oh boy, fun times. I can't wait to get an ear infection on my AIDS medication and have to have them remove my fucking eardrum. Oh, it's going to be good. What's that? You want to you wanna shove some <laughs> interferon alpha B up my ass? Give me that cancer med. Oh, some uh, coloquin? I love my malaria medicine that makes me deaf and blind. Oh, good times ahead. So after you've uh, survived this arduous journey through hell of medications <laughs> and uh, symptoms, there you are at the end, still infectious as ever, a true typhoid Mary, or as I like to call them, it's not really, we can't call them typhoid Marys. We need a new, more appropriate phrase, Wuhan Wangs. There you are as a Wuhan Wang. You don't appear to be sick, but you're infecting everybody. So that whole list of uh, cured patients that China's so fucking proud to put up, might want to step back a little bit on that one when we're talking about peak infectability. How do you deal with a bunch of people that are infectious like that? I wonder what they're going to do. Could they be sent to the COOF camps forever? I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, it hit it. It hit its peak. Let's go back to work in the factories. What could go wrong? Well, I could think of a few scenarios of shit going terribly fucking wrong. As you've now got 80,000 people milling about in society, getting everybody else sick. Seasonal, seasonal my ass. Oh, that's some good stuff. Like this monster of a disease with its 24-day incubation period. It's different symptoms upon reinfection, which are even potentially more dangerous. The fact that if you reach serious or critical condition, if you're one of the unlucky 20% that needs to go on a ventilator and be intubated, they're saying that intubation can last upwards of 30 days. I want you to uh, understand something about intubation and ventilators. If they put you on a mechanical breathing machine for 30 fucking days, you're coming out of that with brain damage. Go look up the studies. <laughs> look what happens to people that are on a, a, a breathing apparatus like that for 30 fucking days. So there's really no winning in this nightmare scenario. But we, I mean, we were only scratching the surface with these symptoms and in incubation. Now, apparently, after you get over the disease, you're still infectious. Fun fucking times. But if that wasn't just awful enough, <laughs> if this disease wasn't terrible enough that can live on surfaces for up to fucking nine days, enjoy those Amazon packages when you order your video games, kids. That's going to be fun. Oh, you want that new Switch game? Guess what? It's getting shipped to you from China. I'm going to sneeze all over it. As if that wasn't bad enough, as if the idea that this is uh, aerosolized, that it can be sneezed up to three to four meters at you, wasn't bad enough. Prepare to meet India's worst fucking nightmare. Braps of death. COVID-19 may be both respiratory and fecal transmission. While a sneeze by someone with a respiratory disease can only infect others within a few meters, virus-laden gaseous plumes from an infected person with diarrhea can infect others up to 200 meters. Now, I want you to imagine yourself. There you are, Pajit, sitting down by the river, squatting, letting out a deuce. Not feeling so well. I had a bit of a cough for a while. Not sure what's going on there. But you're squeezing it out because that's what you do. It's a designated shitting area. All of a sudden, your gaseous plume of death floats 200 fucking meters and infects everybody else in the area. Bet you wish you'd listen to those fucking UNICEF PSAs about using a toilet now, huh? <laughs> Gaseous plumes of death. Oh, this is... I love this girl. I'm in love with this avatar of death. What re... We're living 
in a fucking novel. This is like in the mouth of madness. This is so insane it has to have been written by somebody. You can't make things like this up. Fucking fecal ass explosion death plumes. Oh, how'd you like to have that written on your goddamn tombstone? So how'd you, uh, how'd you get taken out? Well, somebody farted near me. You see, I was hanging out down by the river with my bud. And, uh, he had really bad diarrhea. I was like half a mile away, but what do you know? His fucking fecal explosive, <laughs> his death cloud, caught up to me. He brapped his way all the way over here across the river, and now I'm a dead man. I'm a dead man. Oh, the gift that keeps on giving. But I, yeah, so I just wanted to start out with the Nothing Burger thing. When there, when you hear people say, or try to say, which I don't even believe, by the way, that it's hit peak in China, but when they say it's hit peak in China, just remember, they're not cured. <laughs> they're still infecting people. <sighs> there is no cure. There's no cure at all. Can we talk about just basic human fucking stupidity? Because we've seen quite a few examples of basic human fucking stupidity since this thing has began. Seems like every world leader, regardless of political affiliation, save one, and we'll talk about him in a minute, has been just retarded when it comes to dealing with this. But the basic person on the street, too, is very fairly stupid. Now, I'd like to show you something that happened, uh, like just happened a couple weeks ago. Uh, you know, one of those campaigns is each of those terrible races a lesson. I want you to, uh, I'm going to read this to you, and I think you'll immediately understand why it's funny. And then uh, just, just let me read it to you, and then think about what's recently happened. And you'll see the humor in it, I think. On the streets of Florence, Italy, a Wuhan student studying abroad stood with his eyes closed at the card next to him. I am not a virus... I am a human. Eradic eradicate the prejudice. You will love to see how people respond. Oh, how did they respond? Let's watch. Oh my god, this is so uplifting and heartwarming. Oh, get fuck xenophobia. He's not a virus. I want this man to spit in my mouth. That's right, get up there and make direct contact, you fucking limp shit morons. Oh, take that mask and that blindfold off and kiss him. Oh, get in there for a smooch. <laughs> oh, what's the virus count in Italy right now, by the way? Is it 320? Spreading like wildfire, isn't it? <laughs> oh, that is some good. That's some good shit. I am not a virus. Come and give me a hug. Give me a kiss. Let the Chinese man spit in your mouth. That's the only way to teach those fucking racists a lesson. It's like they're just... They're just daring things. They're being very daring about it. Oh, I don't even know where do we begin. There's so much to go over. You know what? Let's talk about the effects. We talked about manufacturing in China. I mean, I've covered that the last couple of streams. I don't think that's really surprising to anyone, is it? That 16% of manufacturing in this globalized world uh, takes place, of course, in China. And that affecting the supply lines is going to cause problems elsewhere. But uh, eventually it has to catch up to you. And uh, what happened yesterday with our, our nothing burger, our empty bun, as it were? Wait, Now, the red numbers, I'm not an expert on stock markets. Red's good, right? When it says negative 1,000, right, in red, that's a that's good. Because you want to be number one, so a high number in the stock market must be bad. So it, it, it went up 3.56%, technically, on its way to number one. 
And look, everybody's doing so well. Just all those negative numbers, all that red. That must mean things are looking up. <laughs> what, what were some of the headlines regarding this? Oh, oh wait, socks plunge as coronavirus spreads, costing investors $1.3 trillion. That can't be right. Let's look at the stocks today. Maybe, maybe that corrected itself. No, it's, it's more red. Lots and lots of more red. Negative 879. Does that mean the Dow dropped nearly 2,000 points in two days? That can't be right. At the rate it's going, it's going to be number one real quick. <laughs> oh, oh, my friends. Oh, it, it looks like all those delusions that people have been living under, that uh, this is a empty bun, are finally starting to catch up with people as they realize, perhaps, maybe, uh, shit's hitting the fan. And it's it's looking bad, maybe. Maybe things aren't going as well as we thought. It's maybe not necessarily a nothing burger, but uh, manufacturing and transport around the world is fucked. Uh, multiple people are getting sick in areas everywhere, and uh, companies are starting to tank. Hmm. Who, who saw that coming? All right, everybody that's been paying attention to this shit for the last 30 fucking days. That's right, you crashed that shit. That's right, Bobo. It's it's time. It's time to press the little Y button. Fuck them all into the dirt. <laughs> oh, you know, I could have sworn there was an, another example of human... St oh, here we go. I skipped over this. I shouldn't skip over this. If we're talking about just fucking retards. Um, you, so you have the guy from the Wuhan student hugging everybody in Italy, and then a week later, everybody in Italy is sick. Let's look at a few more examples of just stunning and brave brilliance. Uh, here's one from Iran. I think uh, a lot of people saw this, but if you haven't, you'll, you'll, you'll love this. Uh, okay, so... Uh, this guy spent quite a bit of time telling everybody it was a nothing burger until uh, at his press conference he wasn't looking so good. مطالب آموزشی و هشدار و اینا که مردم بدونن انجام شده بود و الان تو این وضعیتی که هستیم با توجه به ثباتی که در قوم oh yeah just just wipe that nothing burger off your face remember nothing to worry about everything's just doing it's just doing great really over in Iran yeah he tested positive <laughs> after sweating like a fucking pig on national television Really brilliant uh, of you, Iran, to hold those uh, uh, public elections and let people line up. I'm sure that's not going to come to bite you in the ass later on as this thing spreads like fucking wildfire through your, uh, through your communities. But of course, it's not just Iran or Italy that's just stupid as shit. Let's not forget about the French and what might be the funniest turnaround in 24 hours you'll ever see. At the top there, we have the French minister saying, I don't really see a need to close the border with Italy over the coronavirus. And then, not even really 24 hours later, new France reports two brand new cases of coronavirus. Oops. I, why, why would we need to clear? Why would we need to, uh, to, to stop that? Why would we need to close that border? Maybe so you don't have people coming over and infecting people? Brilliant. I love world governments. Boy, they're, they're staffed with real smart people. That really make the the big brain fucking decisions that keep us all safe. That's a that's a running theme I've noticed around the world. Hey, can I can I give a thanks as an American, uh, one to the Democratic Party, uh, for keeping those borders open and letting everybody in, and then can I give a thanks to the Republicans, you know, like Trump for slashing the CDC budget by sixteen percent, and firing the pandemic response team. Both of you, just give yourselves a round of applause. Brilliant fucking plans. Keep the borders open. Cut down our healthcare spending, and then get rid of the guys that are in charge of pandemic or pandemic responses. You are just a gaggle of fucking idiots, aren't you? It's it's almost like they're daring it. 
This is like some kind of double dog dare shit where world governments just want to see how much they can piss off Corona Chan before she goes apocalyptic on them. You know, they had reported <clears throat> potentially 260 cases down in Chile and South America. And that's interesting because the CDC held a teleconference today. Again, that's uh, something that's fairly common with them. I think who even does it? Or if you're a journalist, you can call in with questions and then it's all over the phone. If you're a regular citizen, you can call in and just listen in. Or you could pretend you're a journalist and ask funny questions. Good luck. Anyway, the CDC was going over some of their things. Quite a few interesting questions being asked. And, of course, the last one by CNN journalists trying to get a gotcha moment uh, led to a little bit of information that was a bit surprising and related to a potential spread in South America or Africa. When they were talking about their mathematical modeling of how this virus would spread and the time frame that it would do it in, and what would affect its seasonality, CDC said that Donald Trump had gone with their most optimistic, optimistic version, thinking that warm weather will make it go away. Well, I can tell you right now in Chile, it's definitely above the point that they would be suspecting that this could survive. You've also got Singapore that has fairly warm weather, Australia that has fairly warm weather. We can see it's making its way now into Africa through Egypt and Algeria. So I'm not very convinced that that optimistic model is accurate for shit. I maybe think that just everybody out there is pants on head fucking retarded with this thing. And their incompetence is just making it worse. And I don't understand why. It really is helping to highlight the lack of leadership everywhere. In every party. Of every affiliation. Of just, just how fucking dumb they are. Our perfect little... Our perfect little Wuhan bioweapon. And I'm sticking with that story. I know Tom Cotton, the senator, got a lot of trouble because he said he didn't believe it came from the wet market. He thought it came from a biolab, potentially. It was one of his four hypotheses. The mainstream media got on his ass and said he was a terrible guy for even suggesting that that could be a possibility. Until China itself came out and said, yeah, it didn't come from the wet market. It came from somewhere else, but we don't know. Well, I could hazard a fucking guess on where that came from. I think everybody else can, too, at this point. A disease that kills old men and renders young men infertile? A disease that infects somebody and keeps them infectious for the rest of their life? A disease that can kill you by drowning you in your lungs or making your heart fail or creating a massive organ failure? Cytokine storms? Verbal seizures? It's the ultimate fucking killing weapon. It's just, it's a slow burn. You can't make something that just kills 90% of the people and won't have enough hosts to infect got to make it slow. It's got to be gradual. You can't get pushy on a date with this girl. You need to you need to woo the girl from Wuhan. <sighs> and yet still, even as it becomes more and more ridiculous and spreads further and further and we get clusters appearing here and there in the Middle East and Europe, officials still have been trying to push the narrative that this is nothing to worry about even though they've slowly started to stake her back from that. Now, of course, our boy Teddy from the World Health Organization, you remember him, he's the guy that uh, covered up those cholera epidemics in Africa to get his position at the World Health Organization. That guy. He's the same one that praises China a lot. Look into it. Anyway, Teddy, our boy, uh, went on to tell people that we can't rate this as a pandemic because we don't have a system in place anymore to rate pandemics, so we can't really probably call it that. Now, of course, he got a lot of shit and pushback on that. And now, all of a sudden, he's saying it's a potential pandemic. I think everybody's pretty much agreed at this point that this is, by any definition, a pandemic. Sure, you may not, you might not have, at the moment, millions of people dead in the streets. But it's on six continents. Or, I'm sorry, five continents. Probably, It's probably going to be in South America. Let's just be honest. It's only a matter of time. It's inevitable. Like, it was inevitable that it would show up in the Middle East. It was inevitable that it would show up in Africa. It was inevitable that it would spread further in Europe. But Teddy's saying, well, this can't, uh, this can't be a pandemic. That's not possible. We don't have a word for it anymore. Really still out there just sucking that Chinese dick, aren't you, bro? Now, that doesn't mean that everybody has gone along with that. In fact, you're probably going to start to see some spooky things. Let me see if I can find it. Boy, did I did I keep that up there? I might not have kept it up. 
Well, let's look at uh, some of the media narrative. Some of the things that are being said now. Remember, it started off with, you can't be racist, let a Chinese man spit in your mouth. Then it went to, it's just the flu. Then it went to, it won't be a pandemic. And now we've reached a new phase. Uh, this is a variation of the one that said, uh, maybe we should just lie down and die. Uh, this is from the Atlantic. You're likely to get the coronavirus. Most cases aren't life-threatening, which also makes it a little harder to deal with. And it's an entire article basically trying to soft, you know, it's like a soft sale of this. Hey, don't, you know, every, we're too, bro, okay, we're all going to get this disease. It's like not a big deal, right? So like 7 billion people get a disease that kills what? <laughs> Maybe 5% of the world? Not a big deal. Relax. What's 5%? I can't even do that math. It's the sniffles. You're likely to get it. Just get get over it. Just get over it. <laughs> what are you worried about? Okay? Not a big deal, man. This happens this happens every year. You just need to relax, bro. Alright, you're taking this too seriously. Alright, everybody's gonna get it. So what if it affects the uh affects the Olympics? Which can I just going back to my point about this being a fucking copy of uh in the mouth of madness that we're living in a novel written by an insane man. Uh, re uh, take a look at this. In regards to the Olympics, this is from a verified account. They're not making it up for laughs, which you'd think they would. Oh, can I? Oh, well, this is from uh, the AP. AP Sports. IOC member Dick Pound. <laughs> IOC member Dick Pound says Tokyo Olympic organizers have until May to see if the virus is under control. If not, you're probably looking at a cancellation. So big old dick pounds up there throwing some weight around, letting some heavy shit hit the table, telling you the uh, Tokyo Olympics ain't going to happen, bro. Nobody wants to fuck with dick pound. A pound of dick is a dangerous thing to anger. And apparently the Olympic Committee is learning that the hard way. Also, the guy we put in charge of our uh, handling the American shit, the one that... Uh, the one that tried to link the John Hopkins map and sent the wrong link out. His name is Chad Wolf. Chad Wolf. Dick Pound and Chad Wolf. I'm just waiting for, well, like, what's the next one? Studley Tiger? What organization does Studley Tiger work, or work for? Let's think of some more names that are just fucking ridiculous for our health officials and official, <laughs> officials all over the world to have. I think... I'm starting to think God just figured, fuck it, I'm going to see what's the funniest apocalypse I can come up with because these monkeys deserve it. You know, they, they, they're they all in it for the lulls. They like that keck shit. So I'm going to show them what Yahweh can do. A little old-fashioned Old Testament humor. Enjoy your Chad Wolfs and your dick pounds. <laughs> uh, yeah, enjoy your, 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 enjoy it just collapsing on your head. It's funny to me. That's why I sent a little girl with bat wings to destroy you all. <laughs> oh, and the locust swarm. Let's not forget about the most beautiful locust swarm that's swirling around Africa and China. Amazing. Amazing. <sighs> we live in a, a fucking dark comedy at this point. Now, you may remember from the last stream, since we're talking about dark comedies, we mentioned that there was a, a South Korean cult, very interesting, you know, there, there's some shenanigans related to that South Korean cult. Put together a little uh, infograph here, a little macro, to help highlight some of it. Let's follow along and uh, just take a look at this. First off, okay, the fucking cult's name, it, it's Shinji. They just put Chion in the middle. It's the cult of Chinji. They've picked the worst anime character in existence and built a cult around him. And I'm sticking with that narrative. Fuck them if they have a problem with it. But let's look at two places that this thing is spread that our little cult of Shinji has been connected to. Well, shadowy church is at the center of the coronavirus outbreak in South Korea. Did you know that up to a third of the cases reported in South Korea come from this church? Most cases are connected to it. Did you also know that Israel is now getting its ass handed to it? Because they decided to send over a little tour group, the Shinji church, uh, toured Israel sites. 18 of them affected with the virus at the time. 180 or 120,000 members, the best part of this all. The organization had opened a church in Wuhan 
and then erased all references to it. Now when you think about this, things get a little weird. Okay, we're going to go a little Alex Jones on this shit for a moment. So put your tinfoil hats on. Let's talk about this crazy cult from South Korea that seems to be connected to the outbreaks in at least two nations. Now our doomsday cult here, the Church of Shinji, I'd want doom and gloom too. I'd want the world to end if I had to watch this fucking anime again so I can understand the motivation that's probably pushing them forward on that gets a bunch of people in South Korea sick, gets potentially a bunch of people in Israel sick. But then somebody sent me a map of their church locations, and, you know, let's just take a look at the church locations and the original hot zones around the world and see by circling them in red if anything lines up. So here's the Shinji church, and circled in red are all the places that the virus suddenly, you know, just kind of started uh, kicking off. Two locations in Canada... You've got your one up by Massachusetts, the multiple locations in California, uh, Japan, of course, South Korea. You've got the Philippines. You've got uh, cases in India and in China. And then, remarkably, look at that. Finland and Norway, uh, but not Sweden. Lots of them located there in Central Europe and even into Africa. Oh, and Australia, too. It's, it's almost, there are more of them circled than there aren't. Now, going back to that Alex Jones conspiracy shit. You've got a death cult in South Korea that's somehow infecting themselves with this delicious disease. Maybe they were at Wuhan at Ground Zero when this broke off. Maybe a lab worker was a member of the church. And they're all infected. And they've got weeks of lead-up time because that has a 24-day incubation period. And so they decide to go visit some of the branches all over the world. What do you think's going to happen? And our little cult of Shenji. Look at that smiling face. Look at that smiling face. So happy. So happy to bring about the end times of Apocalypse. Yes, the Koof cultists, as it were. Oh, and you may laugh, chat. But just understand that at the moment, the South Korean government is working on rounding them up and shutting their churches down. No, I'm not sure why that is. Maybe they're concerned about it, too. Maybe these Koof, uh, these, uh, uh, Koof cultists, maybe they're out there doing some shenanigans that we're unaware of. But it sure is interesting. It sure is interesting to watch the Church of Shinji spread the good word of our little lady from Wuhan. Con that's right, congratulations. They are in order. Get that message out, spread it across the world to all the people waiting to embrace her, her love, <laughs> her message of unity. Oh, if we can't be one in this world, we'll be one in the grave. What a beautiful message of unity. There are no differences when you're dead. When we're all piled in this fucking, uh, uh, this pit together, that's when we'll have true equality. That's the message of the Shinji cult. You know, I like that a journalist actually went to interview them. And uh, their leader is insane. I told the, the journalist that he was immortal. And told them that, you know, if you want to join the Shinji cult, like, you have to go through a pre-selection phase that can last up to six months. Six months to get into this little cult. And then you're taken blindfolded to secret meeting places so you can't give away where it is. Very, very strange. Waiting for the world to end. Because he is, as he claims, the second reincarnation of Jesus Christ. Probably trying to uh, fulfill the end times and uh, get the apocalypse to kick off. Some food for thought. An interesting little anecdote, a nice little side story of things that are happening out there. Throw a, a few extra book ideas at you. We had Dean Kuntz talking about Wuhan 400. Somebody said this lines up almost with uh, a Tom Clancy novel about a cult that was trying to spread a disease around the world. Can't forget the division as well, since it apparently can live on money in their using UV light and just burning bills to try to get through it. So lots of fun shit. Fiction becoming reality is, it's the way to go, I think. Uh, why not? But if we're going to go conspiracy on this, let's go, let's go full tilt. This is from the CDC government website. You can look it up yourselves. It's been updated February 24th, even though the numbers are technically inaccurate. We have many more confirmed cases, but here they are. And it tells you how many people have tested positive travel-related 12 
person to person two. So they're saying 14 confirmed cases. Again, we know there are more, but <clears throat> this is what they're saying. Uh, but below that's uh, more interesting. Total tested, 426 total tested, just 426. Now, when they sent their testing kits out to people uh, uh, in different states, they said, well, there was a problem with the reagent. We're getting false negatives. There, there, there's an issue with some of the chemicals. So we need to take all those uh, kits back. You need to test directly through us. We don't want states testing. You need to test directly through the CDC to get your results. And it got me to thinking, why is it that South Korea at this point has tested 20,000 people, Japan has tested over 2,000 people, China has tested, I believe, 30,000 people using this specific test, and other nations as well, Italy's testing and everybody else is. And yet the CDC is saying they've only tested 426 people. Now, why would they why would they only be able to test that minimal amount? It seems so strange to have such an issue with your testing kits. Reports of flu-like illnesses remain high even as flu season wanes. The end of this flu season is still more active than even the highest peak of last year's difficult season. That's interesting when you put those two things side by side. They're both from the 24th, by the way. So there are a bunch of people out there with flu-like illnesses. That it's higher than the peak of last year during the most difficult season they've ever experienced. Oh, they're coming. They're coming for me. I, had to, I don't know what that was. All of a sudden, my mic just died on me. That wasn't even me hitting mute. That was it just died on me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Let me, let, me, let me try it again. We should have audio coming through now. Let me see how far behind. Oh, that is some spooky shit. All right, it's back. It's back. Relax. I, honest to God, I don't know what happened there. All of a sudden, it just cut out as I was going over my CDC conspiracy. You're not going to get me, government. You can't stop this happening. I don't know where it cut out, so I don't know what you did in here. So I'll just sum it up again. CDC's only tested 426 people after sending out faulty kits, claiming it can't test anymore. Other nations are testing thousands to tens of thousands of people easily. At the same time, we're having reports of flu-like illnesses all over the United States. Seems a little bit coincidental, which leads me back to my main point. If you've watched a sci-fi movie or a horror movie where the aliens are coming, or there's a meteor that's going to smash into the Earth, what always happens in those sci-fi movies? Well, there's a scientist who finds out, oh my God, they look through their telescope, or oh, they see a sign of an alien somewhere up in the sky. And they're, they freak out, they start running, and they say, holy shit, you need to understand, there's a meteor coming for us. We need to inform that the American people need to know. They need to be able to be prepared for what's coming. But of course, what happens? There's always somebody there that says, no, we can't tell them because they'll freak the fuck out. The American people can't handle knowing the meteor is going to hit, that the aliens are going to invade. You need to sit on that information. So it makes me wonder, why is it the CDC can only test 426 people? Did they maybe find out that there are more cases out there, many more cases out there, and don't want to start people freaking out, want to gradually ease you into it as the markets crash around the world that spreads everywhere? It would be kind of ridiculous to imagine that it hadn't spread here. It's quite a lot of international traffic and travel coming from China to the United States and coming from all these other infected regions. How do you manage that? What exactly is your containment scenario? Okay, you block flights from China. But then India is infected. Do you block flights from them? What about Japan and South Korea, Algeria, Italy? How do you keep up with it? You either lock the borders down or you're fucked. I mean, that French, the, the, the little French screen cap earlier, that's, that's humorous. But it does point out a flaw. As it spreads, you have more vectors of infecting you. So it's hard for me to imagine that we have so few cases in the United States. I'm sure we've got upwards of 7,000 people under quarantine being watched right now self isolation uh, uh you know dictated by the federal government not not you know they're not volunteering for it it's federal self quarantine it just in california upwards of 7000 325 in michigan another 300 in washington all over the place very interesting in fact there's a court battle going on about this uh that you can watch kind of transpire uh somebody from fox news is covering it in la and uh, some of the justification for what they want to do is fucking stunning to me. But uh, let's let's go over that. Breaking. He's at a federal court, obviously, talking about this. 
And now they're talking about what's going on in Costa Mesa. Costa Mesa was going to have 67 people brought to them and put into a building. Now Costa Mesa says we're a very populated area and you want to bring confirmed cases here. Uh, again, very weird, right? Remember, we saw the CDC website said only 14 people, yet every news report about this is 60 to 70 confirmed coronavirus patients wanted to put them in Costa Mesa into a building. They ended up having to sue. Didn't want that to happen. And the feds, and they uh, went back and forth on this. But uh, I think this is probably the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. This was the government's reasoning for why they chose Costa Mesa and the Development Center. The feds and state of California want to bring newly infected California residents to the Fairview De uh, Devel Developmental Center in Costa Mesa, which is in a densely populated area. State and federal uh, say it's surrounded by a golf course on three sides. CDC inspected this and uh, found it suitable. So basically what the federal government in their infinite fucking wisdom is telling the people of Costa Mesa and I, 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 it's hard to even fathom that this is a real thing. They're saying, hey, we're going to put 70 people we know are infected in that building over there. But don't worry about it. You're protected because there's a golf course. Hey, we have this terrible disease that if somebody farts from their shitty ass, will shoot out fecal death matter 200 meters into the air and outwards. But you're protected because you have a golf course around you. That should, that, you know, people, golf courses are a natural barrier and barricade against uh, deadly viruses that may come to infect you. You just need to trust us on this, bro. All right, and stop freaking out. <laughs> I don't understand what, what's the issue, man? What, what's, what's the issue? I don't blame Costa Mesa, and I don't even blame the community in Alabama for not wanting this to come to their area. They're freaked out. Why wouldn't you be freaked out? You know, the framing of this has been, you're racist if you don't accept it. Bullshit. You're cautious if you don't accept it. Oh, you're not going to enough Chinese restaurants. You're not going to enough populated metropolitan areas. Why won't you go on this plane trip? Why would you subject yourself to something that's a risk? As you know, a new disease is spreading everywhere. A disease that apparently can hide in people. They can be asymptomatic and a spreader of it before they get sick get sick, recover, and still be an asymptomatic spreader afterwards. Why wouldn't that terrify people? So you have all these infected people, and instead of keeping them segregated on these military bases, the 15 you set up all over the country, you want to start just planting them in different communities. Now, how is that for a response? You're not going to try to geographically isolate this. You're not going to say, we're going to take all these overseas cases and suspected cases in the U.S., and we're going to geographically isolate them to a particular state or two. And that's going to be our main area, our main focus. All our resources are going to go to that. Instead, what you're going to say is, we're going to take 70 of them and put them in California. We're going to take another 30, move them to Alabama. Let's throw a few in Texas, put a couple up in Michigan. How about some in New York? Let's go to Massachusetts. Let's make sure this fucking plague is in every fucking location around the country. You know, our asymptomatic spreaders. When the CDC did their teleconference and were asked, why are you only using a 14-day uh, quarantine? Their response was, oh, well, we don't have any confirmation that it is 24-day incubation. Even though the doctor that is renowned for working on SARS is the one who published the paper talking about it being a 24-day incubation. Even though we've seen numerous fucking cases from the whistleblower himself in China that brought this case forward to other people that have documented it and we've seen on social media and we've seen doctors talk about their fucking patients saying that incubation periods went beyond 14 days. We had a case in California, 14 days self-quarantine. Three days after they leave, they're, they're testing positive. So you explain to me why the CDC is sticking so ardently to this fucking 14-day thing. So you take all these infected people you move them to multiple states and every geographic region in the fucking country. And then you say, after 14 days, Yahtzee, you're free. Good luck. Have a nice day. You give them a firm handshake and give them a how do you do. And that's supposed to put people at ease and make them comfortable. These are bad decisions. Ridiculous decisions. These health organizations around the world, these world governments, these different leaderships have treated this like it's a joke. For 30 days and it's gotten worse every day and it's had more of an impact every day it's fucked with manufacturing it's fucked with medical 
uh, supplies. It's fucked with the markets. It's infected and killed people. It's spread across borders. And yet, as this continues to go on, as it continues to build and just go on and on and on, they still play these fucking games. Because nobody has enough common sense to try to fucking contain this shit. And China's brutal attempt at it, with their uh, getting rid of any citizen journalist and fudging their fucking numbers and trying to look good and save face, has probably given everybody the wrong perception of how dangerous this disease is and has set us all up for a big fucking surprise. So, if they're right, and all those recovered patients are still infectious, what is the rest of the world going to do? What about those 300 people in Italy? Where do they go? How about the 70 in the United States? What do we do with 70 United States citizens that are still infectious with a disease? Are they quarantined for life? Is, is that what happens? You know, there was a, uh, a movie from the 70s. I can't remember the name of it, about a, a disease that came from outer space. It was like some kind of crystal virus. And these scientists, they go into an underground bunker to deal with it. They're working for a vaccine. And of course, one of the scientists fucks it up. It's a woman. Why wouldn't it be? Uh, she has epilepsy, but she lies to get in on the project and sets off the nuclear destructing uh, mechanism or some shit because it thinks it's been infected. But fast forward to the end of the movie, what happens? The world outside develops one vaccine for a, a version, a mutation of it, and the people in the bunker develop a vaccine for a different mutation. And they can never, ever meet again because they'll infect each other with their, their, their strain of what they've got. So all these asymptomatic people now that spread this disease, that they wear masks for the rest of their life, what, what do we do with them? Anybody have a, yeah, Andromeda strain. Thank you, chat. So what do you, what do, you do with them? What's uh, the world prepared to do with that situation? Everybody's going to have to be on AIDS medicine for the rest of their life? Is that it? We've, we're going to have to start segregating people? Are they going to have to be moved to some kind of fucking island, survivor island? This is going to be like the Tower of Babylon or some shit? <laughs> They're going to have to come up. It's the it's like a reverse version of the Tower of Babylon or, or Babel, whatever. Uh, we're going to have to take people from around the world, stick them in one place, and wait till they learn one common language because they're, they're the only ones that can be around each other? Just fucking ridiculous. So let's talk about prep because I think it's time now. You know, uh, as this has been going on, uh, I'm sure uh, a fair amount of people, uh, maybe overly cautious, overly eager, you can describe them however you want, uh, thought bad shit was coming, so they prepped. So prepping, what is prepping? Well, obviously it's ordering Jim Baker's amazing buckets of Armageddon cheese. <laughs> Who doesn't want a 54-gallon bucket of cheese so you can survive the, the coming? Also, you could tell this is an American product, I swear to God, upper left-hand corner. Who makes a bucket of hamburgers? That's the most American thing I've ever fucking seen. A Jim Baker bucket of hamburgers for Armageddon. So prepping is just simply preparing for the worst. And I think maybe maybe it's time to consider prepping. And why do I bring that up? Well, I want to show you just a few clips to give you an idea. Just a small idea of kind of what it's like when you don't prep and this stuff starts to go tits up around you. So let's take a look at South Korea because it kind of blew up in South Korea and uh, see what's going on with them. Uh, here's a video of people. I want you to look at the size of this line. They're lined up to buy masks, by the way. Just unbelievable. That, that amount of people just to get into a store to get masks. Now, do you want to be in a line when shit hits the fan over here? Do you want to be stuck in a line of dealing with people? <laughs> of uh, of having to uh, volume's not working on that for some reason doesn't matter of having to deal with people I mean just look at the size of that fucking line you already don't have a goddamn mask now you're going to be in a populated area where there's a fucking outbreak lined up with thousands of people hoping to get a mask or two that'll last you a day or two that's kind of what it looks like when you wait for shit to hit the fan and then you start to get the necessities gathered up now, that's South Korea. Let's take a look at what Italy looks like. Because, you know, why not? It's fun. Here's a video from Italy. Hopefully that's coming in. Just to kind of give you an idea what their supermarkets look like. 
as people suddenly realize, oh shit, maybe things are going to go bad. As items fly off the shelves. Of course, the idiots that they are went for the stuff that's going to go bad quickest, but whatever. Here's another uh, video from Italy, giving you another idea of just what it looks like inside. This is Milan, I believe. As people just start fucking going ape shit and just uh, start crowding into stores, gathering up fucking anything and everything they can think of. It's line after line of people getting ready because now shit has hit the fan and now they have to deal with it. And that is not the situation that you want to find yourself in. No, you want to be the guy with a bucket of Armageddon cheese, as corny as that may sound. Now, uh, you know, in fact, fuck, where is it? I should have it here. Uh, yep, here we are. Give you an idea, this is in America. Face masks are sold out everywhere in New York City, none at CVS, Target, or Walgreens. And the sign on the door says, face masks and gloves may be temporarily unavailable due to high demand. It's not even hit over here. But due to high demand, we're out of this shit. <sighs> now, I know a lot of people are like, well, where do I get a mask? If I can't go to CVS, if I can't go to Walmart, where do I get my mask? So I'm going to let you in on a little secret. An easy way to get a mask. And I'll even tell you how to do it so you don't look like an insane person. Maybe you're very easily embarrassed and don't want to walk into a store and say, oh my god, it's Armageddon. All right, you want to be able to pull back a little bit from that. So I'm going to give you two phrases to say, and I'm going to tell you where to say them. So write this down on a little sheet of paper. All right, first phrase is, I'm going to do some sheet rocking. Second phrase is, I'm laying two-part epoxy. That's literally all you have to say. And then when you go into the uh, uh, Northwestern Tools, Ace Hardware, Menards, wherever the fuck it is you go, the guy at the front counter will gruff, I mean, uh, whatever, and then he'll point you to the fucking masks. And that's where you're going to find your 3M masks. Don't go to Walmart. Don't go to CVS. Don't go to fucking uh, Walgreens. Go to a fucking hardware and tool store and just tell the guy at the front that and he will point you to the 3M masks. You the N95s, the P100s, all the fucking cartridges you could ever need. And I guarantee you, all the people that are going to panic to look for this shit, are they going to go to the grocery store? They're going to go to Target and Walmart, and they're not going to have any clue where the fuck to find this shit. Except for you, who wrote down the simple phrase, laying some sheetrock, doing some two-part epoxy. So that's my tip to you for, that's prepping 101 from Jim. <laughs> there you go. It's, there you go. That's what you tell him. You tell him you get you your P100s. Get you, yeah, 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 N95s. By the way, I think the P is just uh, uh, related to oil and liquid. Don't worry about it too much. Just get whatever you want. But I would suggest just get a mask ahead of time. Just be ready. Then you got it, and you're not worried about it. Maybe make sure you got a little bit of food stored up, some water stored up, book or a board game for entertainment. Because you're probably going to be sitting in your house for a while. And why would I say that? Well. The CDC has come out and basically said, you need to start preparing. Uh, it's not an if, it's a when. They believe a pandemic is going to hit. They don't know how severe it's going to be, but they've announced it. It's in the news stories now. You can go read it. That happened today. In fact, uh, I believe, surprisingly, even the Minnesota uh, Department of Health, let me see if I can find this article, actually basically came out. The Minnesota, which is a state I would never suspect would ever... Um, say this, decided to come out and basically tell everybody, get your shit in order. <laughs> get your shit in order, it's about to go down. Uh, let's let's take a look at the article. Just to give you an idea of how they're uh, bracing the public for what they think is about to happen. And of course it's going to be, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pull this. Alright, let me see if I can fix this. There we go. I think we're better now. Uh, so, Minnesota experts, it's time for families to plan for an outbreak. This came out yesterday. And just, I want you to look at who the people are that are speaking. That's what makes it so interesting. So far, there are a few dozen confirmed cases in the United States. But Minnesota Department of Health Infectious Disease Director, all right, they're, defa they're uh, you know, it, this is somebody that works for them, Chris Ersman, uh, uh, said, it's very likely there will be outbreaks of the virus here, referring to Minnesota. And Michael Ostrom, an expert of infectious disease at the U of M, said people should assume the virus will hit hard. Ersman said Monday, 
that the state is well prepared to identify cases quickly and isolate them. But if cases are widespread, it's likely schools, churches, and other public meeting places will close. When we talk about shutting things down, we look at how we can use that strategy or strategy effectively to slow down the spread of the disease. Now, uh, Erstman switches off to Alzheimer. He's kind of talking about not doom and gloom, but uh, what I found most interesting is what they say here. Families need to have plans for how they will stay in contact with each other. This is uh, the U of M expert. Who's going to take care of grandma if she gets sick? For single parent families, who's going to be there when the kids get sick or the mom or dad gets sick? That's the kind of thing right now that is really important that we need to begin to address. You know we haven't done that. Erzman said there are some simple but important things everyone can do to re uh, reduce the spread of the virus. Stay home when you're sick. Limited physical contact like handshakes. And she said everyone should think of what they would need to care for sick family members at home. Just to make sure that you know you have some basic resources in terms of foodstuffs and things like that. So that if you would have a family member that gets sick and are unable to go out for a few days, you have enough basic supplies or, uh, to keep going. Now they stress not to panic. But the fact that the Minnesota Department of Health, infectious <laughs> disease expert, as well as somebody who's an authority from the U of M, basically both came out and said, yeah, shit's about to hit the fan. We'll keep the lights on. But uh, grandma might get sick and you're going to need to deal with it. Shit's about to come down the pipeline. It's time that you need to start to address the reality of the situation. And of course, Minnesota says this. And the next day, the CDC basically comes out and says the same thing. It's coming here. We're going to have to deal with it. It's time to face reality. We're not going to be unaffected. We just The only thing we don't know is how bad it's going to be. So when you hear government authorities start to talk about prepping, that's when you need to get your ass to a store and start to prep. And that doesn't mean panic buying. That doesn't mean you go out and you go insane. I'm not telling you to buy a fucking tank, to dig a bunker, to spend $10,000 on fucking Twinkies. I'm just saying, get a mask. Stock up on some basic medicines. You know, get a bag of rice some dried food, some canned foods, some bottled water, just to have some shit so you can hunker down and not have to deal with this because we don't know where it's going to pop up. And if it pops up in your town and they lock you down, if they quarantine that town because it's just too bad off, well, you're going to be on your own and you're going to have to hope that you've got enough food and medicine and other basic necessities to survive. You're going to want some gloves, some hand sanitizers, some shit to clean surfaces, whether that's Lysol or bleach. You're going to need to be attentive. Now, I would wager, if you go out now from this day forward, now that the CDC and other state governments are starting to say this, and just pay attention to the stores you go to, I'm going to guess you're going to start to see things are disappearing. That's probably other preppers in your area that are getting ready. Because when it finally does, and I think the American mentality is going to be, you're going to need to see people die on the street. You're going to need to see an American filmed having a massive heart attack or a verbal seizure uh, on the street. And when that finally happens, and it's confirmed it's from uh, our little girl here, Corona Chan, uh, that's when they're really going to fucking freak out. Now, more than likely, based on the distribution of cases in the U.S., uh, those being watched in quarantine, and based on just basic air travel into the U.S., that's either going to be the East Coast or the West Coast. More than likely, West Coast. More, more than likely, California, you're the first one. When it goes bad, it's going to go bad with you. It's going to be these self-isolated people that become infectious. It's going to be these cured people that are still infectious. It's going to go through your homeless population. And then it's going to start to explode in your major cities. So if you're in California, seriously consider maybe getting some shit in order and being ready. This is rolled out in waves. It came out of China and a few weeks later came into Southeast Asia. A few weeks after that, it slowly rolled into Europe and then hit the Middle East and now has hit uh, Italy. And it will spread, I'm sure, through Europe. So the American wave, if it's coming, probably is going to come in the next week or two. And it's probably going to start in California. I may be surprised. Maybe it's somewhere else. Who knows? But uh, it just doesn't look good. It doesn't look good, especially when you look at articles coming out of China saying they're still sick. The cured are still infectious. This is uh, a nasty fucking thing. Uh, it's caused uh, massive economic damage. It's fucking with uh, entertainment, transportation, just all sorts of things. It's fucking with the stock market. People are getting sick and dying. They're getting scared. And now they're trying to say that it's seasonal, which is even more terrifying. Is that well, next year do we have to lock down a billion people again? Can, can the world's economy handle that? A yearly lockdown of 
uh, a seventh of the population? Is that where we're going? I, I don't think that's something that uh, can be sustainable. This might be the thing where we're going to have to wait a year to 18 months to get a vaccine. And will that even work? I don't know. This disease is so fucking bizarre. Everything about it is so weird with its, uh, uh, you know, I'm sh- let me rephrase that. The totally natural virus is so bizarre and how it acts and what it does. <laughs> fucking hell, man. I feel like I'm living, I feel like I'm living in crazy town. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It's just, it, how many government leaders have we seen do stupid shit? Iranian uh, uh, deputy health minister telling people don't worry about it literally gets sick on national television and confirmed to have a case. Cambodia or the prime minister of Cambodia lets the fucking Westerdam uh, dock at port says there's nothing to worry about, gives hugs and kisses to all the fucking idiot passengers, and then it's confirmed one of them sick. You know, like uh, Japan has. Uh, it's a first world country, yet for some reason all of these different doctors and nurses and quarantine officers keep getting sick. How is that? You know, what, what exactly is going on there? In America, we don't even have our, our fucking pandemic team in place anymore. And the CDC, to me, feels like it's being leashed. Like it's not allowed to really say maybe more than it wants to say. And then it seems like every drug they talk about that treats this thing, every drug that they they list as being a potential cure-all has just horrible fucking side effects. Trust me, you don't want to be on cancer medicine, AIDS medicine, and fucking malaria medicine for the rest of your life. That will be a nightmare. You know, one of the bigger treatment components is uh, steroids, massive amounts of steroids, especially if you're intubated for for a fucking 30-day period to help with the breathing and all that. You need to get the inflammation down. It's going to wreak havoc on your whole fucking system. Oh, man. I feel... It, to me, it doesn't feel like it's it's uh, ending or peaking or finding a balance or an equilibrium. It feels like it's finally starting to begin. And I really hope that story out of China is untrue. I really hope that once you're cured and done with this, that it doesn't say in your body, and worst of all, make you still infectious. Because then we have a real fucking problem. Because then you're going to have to start to make some real tough decisions on what you do with people that can never be cured but can get you sick. You either put them on an island somewhere or you're going to have to take more extreme measures. And I'm sure you can all imagine uh, what that entails. Now, maybe a few countries have the uh, wherewithal, I guess, to do that. uh, But I wouldn't count on all of them being able to do that. But I'd like to talk about world leadership and I'd like to talk about one leader in particular you know what let me I should have had a picture ready of him that's my fault I didn't I'm gonna find a picture of him right now our boy here Uh, let me find a nice handsome picture of him want something that's uh, just stunning something very handsome so I can put up on screen and everybody's like yeah that's him I think that should be good. Sorry, Chad. This will take just a moment. I want to talk about leadership from an unexpected source. All right. Where are you? Where are you, Kimmy? There we go. Let's, it's a little bit too big. Gaze on his glory. All right. There we go. That should be coming through now. So let's talk about Kim Jong-un leader of North Korea and what happened since this began because I think it's really fascinating his reaction to the entire epidemic because at the time it was just an epidemic it was just China now initially right away when this epidemic began Kim was the first nation the first nation to say nope and say we're done with the back and forth travel that's not happening he shut it down now I think this motherfucker has played plague Inc. And I think he understands the Madagascar protocol because he is living it. So the first thing he does is he says, no, we're not, no more travel with China. We need to, we need to secure our border. (laughs) That's not happening. Then he hears that people maybe are slipping through the border. So he starts to spray every fucking road. Then he comes up with another policy. Instead of all these other countries that are going with 14 day quarantine periods, Instead of all these other countries that are allowing international trade to go through without any real regulation, 
he, imp he puts into place two different policies. The first, all packages, all imports that come into North Korea will be held uh, will be held at a facility for 10 days and decontaminated before they're allowed to be used or sent on to whatever area or person that ordered them. Second is, any person who is not North Korean that comes to North Korea must now go through a mandatory, not 10-day, not 14-day, not 24-day, a mandatory 30-day quarantine. So why is it our boy here, Kim, is the first one to shut those fucking borders? The first one to put in a quarantine disinfection procedure for packages and imports, and the first one to put into place a 30-day quarantine. Didn't everybody tell me that North Korea was the worst country in the world? Oh, they don't know what they're doing. They're starving to death. <clears throat> they, they only eat rice. They're all stupid. Because he seems to be the only one right now that has any common fucking sense. He seems to be the only one that recognized that, hey, Shit's about to hit the fan. Maybe I should start planning for it. You know, there's even a document going around, and I can't verify if it's real or not, where he's already named his potential successor. So he, he's preparing for every bad scenario he can right now to have things in place to deal with this. So let me ask this to... I'm American. Let me ask this to the American government. Why are you... Why is your response to the coronavirus, COVID-19... The Wu flu. Why is your response to it worse than the response uh, that North Korea has to it? Why are you lagging behind in protocols and practices and they're excelling at it? Why is North Korea doing better at it than America is? You know, if Kim had a Twitter account, I think this is the point where he'd start firing shots at Trump for all those jokes for all those years. Be like, oh, your borders are still open, are they? Oh, that's cute. A 14-day 14 day quarantines. How quaint. How adorably quaint that is, Donald. They don't call it Best Korea for nothing, apparently. Look at that little cherub face. Now, I don't know what's going on in there. I mean, there was a rumor that somebody was suspected, a North Korean was suspected of having the disease, and went out in public when he shouldn't have. So what did Kim do? You give him a slap on the wrist and tell him no, he shot him in the fucking head. <laughs> they were there. They went to public when they were supposed to be in quarantine, immediately summar or summarily executed on the spot. Dousing his roads with chemicals. Yeah, he's not fucking around. I I, I know this guy has played play gank. I fucking know he has. And he's taking all he's basically probably played it on like Mega Brutal or Brutal or whatever. And he's taking he's he's flipped it around. He's not the player anymore. He's the He's the uh, the AI, the CPU. So now he's he's a computer opponent. He's using all their moves against this disease. So when the world burns and everything is reduced to ash and nobody is left, there will be one pudgy little cherub and his country full of people that will be the lone survivors in it all. And that country will be North Korea. <laughs> because apparently they're just not putting up with any shit. You know, interestingly, the Red Cross put in a uh, uh, like some kind of emergency petition with the UN to go to North Korea because they're so worried about them. Don't trust them, Kim. They're trying to trick you. They're probably members of that South Korean cult. Don't trust them. All right, you you turtle up. That's the fucking strategy. You're a plague ink player. You know what the deal is. Koof pilled? Yes, Chad, he's koof pilled. Oh man. You know, let's take a let's take a look at the map. Let's take a look at the map and see just how awful this is today. Just the amount of countries. I mean you should be able to tell from the picture, but I think just kind of going over the totals of what they're at least sitting at now kind of gives you an idea of the spread and the growth of this um, around the world. Let's see. Go to uh BNN tracker or BNO tracker here should be up. Yep. Okay. So 80,000 infected worldwide, 2,700 deaths. Uh, we know most of the Chinese or Chinese stats. I don't believe them anymore. But again, remember that story. They said uh, the cured are now actually not cured at all. So they have 27,000 Wuhan Wangs out there giving the gift to their neighbors. So really, the only outcome of this disease, if that story is true, is death or reinfecting other people. 
So you either die or you make other people uh, are, are death or you reinfect them. That That's your two choices. South Korea, nearly 1,000 infected, 11 dead. There's Italy. Now, this is really weird. South Korea only has 11 dead and three times the amount of infected that Italy does. So they're dropping like flies in Italy. Japan's at 161. Iran shooting up, and I guarantee you because of that election, we're going to see big numbers in Iran. Singapore, even though it's it's got a great healthcare system, it still has cases popping up. It used to be like 84, 85. Now it's up to 91. Now let's look at all these new countries that have joined uh, the, the Friendship Brigade. Here we go with Israel with two. Lebanon with one. Afghanistan with one. Austria's got two. Croatia, Switzerland, Algeria. And before that, of course, Belgium. And Sw oh, Sweden is on the list now. Well, forgive me. I, I, maybe I fucked that up. But there, there you are. There's our map of all the sick people, all the infected dead people. Not sure why it's pointing me to Germany. Oh my god, am I giving away my location? That's right, I'm coming to you live from... Where am I coming to you live from? From Gupenging. That's that... They, oh, B&O's doxed me, guys. They've got my, they've got my map location. I live in Gupenging. Hopefully none of these infected get to me. Pretend you didn't see that. Let's pretend we didn't see that. And then, of course, all the deaths and new cases today. Still out there, still spreading, country to country, growing every day. Just growing every day. Somebody suggested a battle royale. I don't know how that's going to go. Uh, but that is our update today. I just wanted to talk about it because three big things have happened. Uh, one, we have to worry about people that have recovered still being infectious. That is a big fucking issue. Uh, two, the CDC and state governments and other governments around the world are basically telling you to prepare. They're doing it very diplomatically and they're doing it in a very political way. But don't be one of those people that ignores it. They're telling you to prepare. So you better pay attention and start really putting some effort into it. And uh, number three, uh, based on uh, just everything going on with uh, the world markets and everything else, uh, people are scared and uh, they're going to start doing runs on things when they start to get scared. So if you start seeing more cases popping up, there are going to be runs on grocery stores, uh, runs on masks, runs on weapons. Uh, so you just you don't want to be behind everybody else. Now, I don't know where it's going to go, but uh, it seems to be spreading pretty fast in Italy, Iran, and South Korea. Well, you know, maybe they manage it. Maybe this really, when April comes, it all stops, but I don't see that happening. I see it growing every day. Her power is just, her power is just unstoppable. I think I had another image, too, for a background. What was the other one? There we go. You just can't stop her. Just out there spreading the gift, giving the gift of airborne aids. Airborne aids that you fart out your ass for 200 meters. <laughs> like, who, makes, who makes that bioweapon? Who sits down in the laboratory and says, you know what I'm going to make? I'm going to make airborne aids that you shit out your ass and creates fart plumes that infect giant areas of people. Like, that's just weird. That's some dude that's got a brat fetish. That's some dude that's got a lot of time to kill on his hands. That's decided that that's the route he's going to go with it. So with that, I think we'll close out the stream proper. Uh, but my final words as you go off to do your daily thing, uh, just pay attention to what's going on and consider getting some basic necessities. That doesn't mean go overboard and buy crazy shit, but some basic things so you're not stuck and left behind when shit hits the fan. Because that's the worst situation to be in. You saw what it looks like in South Korea. You saw what it looks like in China. You see, you're seeing what it looks like in Italy when it happens. Don't let that be you. Don't be the guy stuck in line to get a mask with a thousand other potential sick people. Don't be the person fighting somebody to get a fucking head of lettuce at the grocery store. Don't be the dude that has to drive through fucking gridlock to go to the, uh, I don't know, the fucking gun store to get ammo. Just do some basic shit ahead of time. And then, you know what? If it passes over, whatever. You got a mask, some extra ammo, and a head of lettuce. But if it doesn't, you got a little something to survive on. 